the end of this video, we're gonna have a step-by-step -step guide on how to use vidIQ to skyrocket both the amount of views and the amount of subscribers that you're currently getting from YouTube. Because if you're not using vidIQ to actually create the descriptions that you use, the tags that you use, the titles that you use, or to spy on your competitors, you're at a massive disadvantage on YouTube right now. In fact, this creator just used his tool to gain over 300,000 subscribers in a really short period of time. And personally, I was able to use vidIQ to gain over 600,000 subscribers and best of all, I was able to become a full-time YouTuber and quit my job simply because of this tool. And I wanted to help you do the same exact thing, which is why I'm creating this tutorial on exactly how to use the tool. By the way, if you don't have it yet, go to the pinned comment below and sign up right now for just $1 for the next 30 days. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna show you on here is if you come up to AI tools, you're gonna to see a bunch of different AI tools. The ones that I think are the most useful by far are going to be one, the YouTube description generator. So here's how you're gonna use it. Let's say I'm making a video like I'm making right now on how to use vidIQ beginners tutorial. Uh, I can't spell, but if you come in, you type this in, guess what's going to happen instantly? We're gonna X out of this. It's going to create a description that's two to three sentences long. And guess what? This is going to be great because it has a ton of different SEO keywords in here. For example, it has beginners tutorial, vidIQ, powerful YouTube analytics and SEO tool. And I didn't have to tell it any of these things. It just knows this type of stuff, which knows that it's going to end up ranking for SEO, which is going to help me increase both the amount of views that I'm getting and the amount of subscribers I'm getting. The second tool that you wanna make sure that you're using is if you come up here and look for tag generator, it should be, here it is. YouTube tag, the same exact thing. I'm gonna type in something like how to use vidIQ beginners tutorial and boom, this is going to give me a bunch of different tags. Now, ideally, what you wanna end up doing when it comes to your tags is you wanna make sure that you're filling out 450 out of the 500 characters because if you're not doing that, you're leaving tags on the table. I wouldn't use more than that. I wouldn't use less than that. I would just stick to like the 450 range because it's gonna increase the odds that you get ranked for search in YouTube or if you don't have a lot of views yet, it's gonna make sure that that seed audience that YouTube is actually using initially for your content is going to be the people that you actually want to reach. But honestly, these features have been absolutely nothing. The next few features I'm about to share with you are going to create your titles for you, come up with content ideas for you, allow you to spy on your competitors, and they're going to allow you to determine how many views you could actually get on your videos. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to show you was exactly how I end up coming up with content ideas from vidIQ. So what you're going to want to do you want to come back to the home page. You want to sign in. As a reminder, if you don't have vidIQ yet, go to the pinned comment below and sign up right now. It's literally $1 for the next 30 days. And this could be the thing that actually gets you monetized on YouTube or increases your ad revenue. So now that we're logged in, there are going to be a few different ways that you can get ideas from here. Number one, daily ideas. This is essentially using AI to come up with different titles that you could be using. But more importantly, I don't want to just use these titles for face value. If you click into them, guess what ends up happening? You end up seeing all the videos that are actually ranked under here. And guess what this does? It tells you what kind of thumbnail you should be using, what kind of title you should be using. But more importantly, you want to be able to pick out which topics are actually working. So if I look at this video right here, there are two different topics that are working. Faceless YouTube automation, that's going to be one topic in itself, and then free AI tools. Now look, if I look through these, I'll actually see, wow, I should probably make a video on a faceless YouTube channel with AI because it's three out of the five results here. And if you open this, you'll get a ton more. The second thing that you can do is if you come up over here, now this will give you also like daily ideas and things under here, but if we go under keywords, and type in something like Facebook or faceless YouTube channel. This is really powerful. So it's going to tell you exactly what this search volume is going to be. Now, what I would recommend, if you take this search volume, I would only go after things that have more than 25,000 searches a month because how many views you get is actually going to be a function of this. So if we're looking at this keyword right here, 630,000, I would ignore this competition. It's great that they have that as a metric, but we're not going to be competing against anybody because we're going to be creating better content than them. So why do we care about the competition? All we should be caring about is the actual search volume these here. So 630,000, I would guess that a video like this is probably going to cap out at one to two X the search volume. Let's test that hypothesis. So if we take this right here, bring this over to YouTube, we type this in here, faceless YouTube channel. 
We have 40,000, 172,000, 200K, 481K. And if we come to some of these shorts, same thing, 900, 100,000. This is 5.2 mil, but I have a feeling that this is somebody that is not in the US, so he probably has, you know, bigger reach to a larger audience. Again, 116, 127. So if we actually look at this, we'll see that we might cap out at this. So I would take this as like a one to two X number and that's gonna determine how many views you could potentially get. But that's not the only thing you need to be focused on here. The second thing is coming over here to these related keywords. And similarly to what I was showing you with the daily ideas, if you then come down on here, it's going to show you all the titles that are working, all the thumbnails that are working. And then here's a pro hack. If you want to come up with better hooks for your content or you want to come up with better scripts for your content if you click on one of these it's going to pull up the video if you copy this and go to youtube transcript.com you enter the url in here guess what this does this is literally going to populate the whole entire transcript over here once it's done oh Oh, so this guy actually disabled transcripts for this video. So he might have seen that somebody was going to do this. So let's actually come to a vidIQ video I'll itself watch. and try to do the same exact thing. Come over here, reload this website without this. Boom. So this is literally going to give me the transcript, right? And then from here, if you're using AI, you could then type this into ChatGPT, or what I like to do is copy the entire thing and try to figure out, okay, here's the hook that they use. Here's the transition phrase that they used. Here's the social proof that they use. And it allows you to create much better scripts on YouTube. And yes, this works for both long form content and for shorts. Now, the other thing that I did want you to pay attention to here is these related keywords. And there's a very strong reason for that. So on this one, I've done this search before. So faceless YouTube, YouTube channel, I knew that that was going to be the most searched keyword. But let's say I didn't do that. Let's say I typed in faceless channel. So this would only be 30,000. But then what I could do is come over here to the right and it's actually going to tell me related keywords. And look, if I would have put faceless channel in my title, it would have massively decreased the amount of reach that I could get versus if I used faceless YouTube channel or YouTube automation. And if we click into here, guess what's going to happen? It's also going to change all of this. So you're going to be able to say, oh, YouTube automation step-by-step -step is actually better than YouTube automation tutorial. In fact, it's 10 times better. And that's the type of reason search it, you need to make sure that you're doing if you want to skyrocket the amount of views that you're getting. But again, we can't stop there because we haven't spied on our competitors yet. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to come over to vidIQ, you are going to come up here. And again, they have all these different tools, but I recommend just using these ones because they're by far the best if you want to get more subscribers. In fact, these are the exact ones that I use to get over 40 million views from search, over 600,000 subscribers, and it allowed me to quit my full-time job to pursue YouTube full-time because I was getting views 24-7 because I was ranking for search. Now, if you want to spy on your competitors, you come over to competitors. From here, you can add all these in, right? So you can search for different channels. Um, like Jesse James West. Boom. So we can add him in there if he was a competitor. He's not a competitor. He's just the first person that came to mind, but we could add him in here. So what you want to do here, if you want to look at Think Media here, who's a competitor of mine, I can include my channel. I cannot include my channel, but essentially what I want to do is filter by this month and I'm able to see which one of their videos are actually getting the most views. And this is gonna be incredibly helpful. Why? Because I might have made the mistake of just searching for them on YouTube, clicking on their videos, coming here, and this is what a lot of you do, go to popular, and then guess what ends up happening? I'm only looking at these videos, I'm trying to recreate these videos, but that's without the context of what is actually getting the views right now, because I don't know if this thing might have been trending two years ago or five years ago in this case, and then I would have tried to recreate that video and I would have been led down the wrong path. Instead, you pull up vidIQ, you can actually see which one of their videos are getting views right now. And ideally, you wanna be focused on ones that are the oldest time period long, but still getting the most views per hours because that's a signal that there's a large audience for that on YouTube and that this audience is eating it up. If you wanna learn how I can personally help you grow on YouTube in the next 30 days to guarantee that you get more subscribers, well, please watch this video right here. It's gonna share with you exactly how we can work together one-on-one -on -one to guarantee that you grow and either get you monetized or get you closer to being monetized. What are you waiting for? Click right here and I'll see you over there.